Strong fish. That's a real strong fish. There we go. Give me your face. <laughs> He's been eating. Man. Took him right at the roof of the mouth too. You think he wanted that? <laughs> He's been eating. Took that worm. Go. Just saw it swimming off. Never felt the bite. Whew. All right, kid. Let's not fall over. All right. Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk about how to catch big fish or bigger fish during the spring. Big bass is what we're talking about. You know, it's funny, every season, you know this, there's, there's several guys that you know that seem to go out and always be, they're always able to catch bigger fish during the spring. I'm like, how do they do that? What do they got? They got a secret bait that they use, secret lure. They know it's these secret sp hot spots on the lake. I mean, what is it? Well, I wish it was that easy because it would make things easy to explain and you can be able to catch larger fish. But the reality is it's the methodology and approach they use to find and catch larger fish. And that's what I want to talk about today is, is using that to go out and, and get larger fish during the spring. So let's talk about really the big fish and what they do in the spring. Now, everything around the spring focuses around the spawn. And a lot of times when we talk about the spawn, it's when all these fish are up shallow. You see beds all over the place. They're about, you know, one to five feet of water. There's a bunch of bucks out there and, and there's beds everywhere. And that's when the spawn is. But the reality is fish spawn several times throughout the spring. You kind of have a wave before that main spawn. You have the main spawn and then another wave after that as a general rule. Well, the bigger fish are the ones that tend to spawn earlier. They're, they're actually out there spawning when these other fish are just starting to get up on the flats and feeding and it's active. So, and they also spawn deeper than the spawn. So, <clears throat> a lot of times when the water temperature gets in the early to, to mid 50s, the low to mid 50s, and the fishing's just starting to pick up. You're out there getting up on the flats, the fish are getting shallow, they're cr you know, crashing your spinner baits and your crankbaits. A lot of times you can be sitting right on top of the bigger fish that are just about spawning or getting ready to spawn or maybe are spawning. Yeah, they spawn mid 50s. I've seen them in low 50s spawning in 10 feet of water. It's really an odd thing because you're used to seeing low 60s, that's when the, the spawn occurs, but these bigger ones are out there doing their thing earlier. So if it's really hard to do this because we've been you know, all winter long, we're not catching a lot of fish. The bite is slow, it finally starts to pick up, we're starting to catch fish, and now I'm telling you, you know what you need to do is back off away from those and fish deeper to go after the bigger fish, which is slower, more methodical, a little more difficult because you can't see the fish. You're not fishing in structure that you can readily see or cover that you can readily see, but that's where the bigger girls are and the bigger males are. It's hard to do that, but this is why there's not that many guys out there catching a lot of big fish. But the ones that do on a consistent basis, that's exactly what they're doing. So <clears throat> mid-50s, pull off and you're looking at, here's a flat that deeper drops along those flats where it drops from 5 to 15 feet of water. That's the areas you want to be looking for. Sometimes there's a secondary flat, what I like to call a secondary flat. You got your main flat, it drops down, then there's another little flat. That lower flat, that's the stuff I want to look for. The clearer the water, the deeper those fish are going to spawn. I've seen them spawn as deep as 15 to 20 feet of water in super clear water. But as a general rule, five to 10 feet, instead of in the normal, the spawn, whether one to five feet, they may be five to 10, five to 15 feet deep. Fish those drops, look for available cover nearby, be it bushes, shrubs, logs, chunk rock, weeds, weed lines. Those are the things you want to target during this time of year. There we go. Yep, got one already. 
Oh, oh boy. Got a big one already. Oh, he came all the way out of the water. Don't go in the weeds. Come on, baby. Come on out. Don't go in the weeds. We're using finesse worms today. Finesse worm. Finesse worms. Come here. I'm hooked right. I don't know what's going on there. You got him hooked weird. I got him hooked, but boy. If I can get your face, it would be helpful. There we go. Oh, came right out of my hand. Come here. He's, He's got a lot of fight in him. He's a little <laughs> angry. <laughs> oh boy. You got that finesse worm just hanging right there. That works. There you go. Boy. That was tough. All right. Let you go. As for baits, what I like to do, I general as a general rule, the bigger the fish, they like to bite slower moving lures. So I like to use a little bit bigger baits and fish them slower. So I'll use things like a, a big swim jig with a six inch paddle tail on it, or some kind of large trailer such as a rage tail space monkey or something like that to give it some bulk and just kind of bounce that real slowly on the bottom. Sometimes I'll just crawl it on the bottom, not give it not a whole lot of big lifts, but crawl it along the bottom, along that, the, the, that covering structure I mentioned. I'll take bigger spinner baits. I'll throw three quarter ounce spinner baits, white or white and chartreuse with Colorado blades on it, and throw it out there, let it get down to the bottom, and then just barely, just start to crank it, just to get it up off the bottom and let it slowly crawl along the bottom. Sometimes with those blades, they want to lift that, that spinner bait up, so you may have to kill it every now and then to get it back down to the bottom and then resume your retrieve. Do that a few times to understand how far off the bottom that it gets. Some, some spinner baits will stay on the bottom, others will lift up, so you just have to experiment with the one you have to see which one will stay down there. But that's a bigger bait, that three quarter ounce bait, and that's what's going to, a lot of times, get a lot of bites from those bigger fish. I also like to use Texas, Texas rig baits, the bigger creature baits. Like I mentioned before, a space monkey is a really good one to use. Um, a rooster tail. Those are the bigger type of, you know, the big rage hogs. You know, those seven inch rage hogs. They're just bigger baits that you can crawl along the bottom, make it look like a lizard or some kind of creature making its way along the bottom nice and slow. You got to be alert for the bite because it's very subtle. A lot of times they just come up behind it and they just suck it up and they don't move. And you may see a little twitch in your line and that's it. You won't feel anything at all. So you got to be really alert and watch for that kind of stuff. Um, but that's, that's how you catch these bigger bass during the spring. I hope those tips help. For more tips and tricks like this, visit BassResource.com.